Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux open source, and basically anything that catches our fancy. I'm Ben Stone, that's Jill Bryant, and over there is Pedro Mateus. Hello. A bunch of things to talk about this week. We got to talk about the... Uh, Steam Deck. We just do. We are. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> that, and, that's uh, big enough news yeah. to justify it. Yes, <laughs> it is. Not yes. Typically gaming news. And technically, we're going to be able to use it as a Linux PC. So, ha. Mm -hmm. But Yay. before we get into that, I want to, I was kind of shocked. Um, last year, I bought a video capture card for the show to do some stuff. It was a Blackmagic Decklink Quad HDMI 4K. Not a cheap piece of kit. Not terribly expensive. It was like 500 bucks. And it didn't work with Threadripper under Linux. I went through the whole rigor room and even sent it back, got it R made. And they sent it back. No, it works fine. Works fine. Finally got in touch. Finally got in touch with somebody, um, the Blackmagic development team, because uh, I got high enough in tech support and tech support just kind of slid the piece of paper over like, here, contact this email address, which I did. And they started troubleshooting it. Hadn't heard anything. Hadn't heard anything for um, four days short of a year after, hey, we mm -hmm. were able to replicate the issue. We'll get wow. back to it. <laughs> four days short of a year. I, I was contacted like, hey, do you remember me? I'm like, yeah, I, I do because I have that thing on a shelf not doing anything. <laughs> and um, we think we have a solution. So we're testing it right now. It ran Saturday night. No problem whatsoever. So... Pedro and Jill are coming in over it, and I've been hammering on it, trying to break it. So I'm happy to happy that uh, it's finally working. Yay! Good job, Black Magic. Which I was surprised because Black Magic really likes to take the position of "We got your money now." So <laughs> that sounds like a personal problem. Uh, I got a new tablet. I did. And awesome! It's a very difficult <laughs> thing to find because I'm sure, as Pedro knows. There is no market for mid-range tablets anymore. <laughs> no. mm -mm. You either go for the budget eight inch, really, really crappy ones or the uh, Amazon fires or the stupid expensive ones. <laughs> eight yeah. or 10 inch. Uh, you can go to Amazon and go to eBay. You'll find tons of eight and 10 inch tablets from companies that you've never heard of, nor can pronounce the names of. And they're everywhere and they perform as well as you would expect. You know, you'd buy them for a kid and they break, you just, you know, buy five of them. High end, yes, you're going to end up on like an iPad Pro or a Surface or something like that. You know, you're talking eight, nine hundred dollars, but that nice little sweet spot, that market's just poof, except for Samsung. And they know it. <laughs> <laughs> we got to dictate everything that goes on in this price range. <laughs> they pretty much have it down. What I ended up mm. getting after a lot of research, because I, I didn't want. You know, I really wanted like a big one, like a 12 inch or something like that. But that, that that's just too much. I use the laptop as a daily driver. You know, I got to be able to do um, media consumption, of course, but uh, note taking. It's got to do with Google Docs. I got to be able to browse the webs and a couple of other things. I ended up with the Samsung Galaxy S6 Lite, which I've had since Friday. Very happy with it. Very happy with it for the price because you can get them refurbed up. Um, I think it'd be like 250 270 for it. And I mean, it showed up in like a Samsung OEM, just brown box. Mm -hmm. you know, perfect shape. No issue. Um, and the good thing about Samsung, you can unlock the bootloader. You don't have to like fuzz the bootloader the same way you do in like a fire tablet, which was nice. <laughs> that was good. Um, the latest version of Lineage mm -hmm. is available for them put that on there. They're rootable. I had to go through that thing of, I, I don't typically play around with tablets, you know, that part anymore. I did a long time ago, but I had to get caught up. I'm like, how are the kids doing it this day? You know, how, how do I root my tablet? They just like, ah, that's how we're doing it. This is after, of course, I'll just put the super SU binary on there, ADP, push that. And, uh, it didn't work. So I finally got around to doing that and, um, yeah, very happy. It was very performant is one thing I will say. For that price, and I'm, I'm not cutting it any slack whatsoever. It's a big little design, octo core, four gigs of RAM, 2K screen, everything I've thrown at it, um, no chug, anything like that. It's got an S Pen that I don't have yet. I was hoping would show up before the show. 
So I could. Oh, that's what he's been waiting for. <laughs> it is because I want to do one thing with it and never use it again. And um, hasn't came yet. So yeah, the only negative, which I've never messed around with, is people say that the gaming performance for 3D gaming is not up to snuff. Shrug emoji on that. So, oh, there you go. <laughs> I tried the whole tablet gaming thing. No. You probably For did card the- games like Hearthstone. It's fine, but that's about it. <laughs> Maybe the same thing I did. Curiosity. Like, ah, okay, I guess you could do that if you had to. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, good piece of kit. What's new with you, Joe? Oh, boy. So, like a lot of us tried, um, I got a reservation for the 256 gigabyte NVMe Steam Deck. Yay! It took a few hours. I didn't get mine till like one o'clock because because the server, you know, as so many people know, the uh, steamy servers were down, and in LA, it happened really quick. <laughs> so that was a thing. So, but I kept pushing on, pushing at it, kept going back and going back, and finally got a hold of one. <laughs> Pedro, you didn't uh, order one. I did. I put in the reservation, <laughs> oh. but it wasn't the two, 256 gig one. It was the, the 64 gig EMMC one, which, you, as we now know, they all have. Breaking, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am going to be taking it apart and uh, putting one of them in there. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> 22, job, 30, yeah. 256 gig uh, Keoxia SSD. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, that's for December. I I have a few months to save up so I can buy it without dipping into the money that I already have set aside for the video card. Whenever that is available, uh, that yeah, drops. This, this is the thing, man. Um, <laughs> you, you didn't get me Valve. I, I with the twenty nine seventy for five. I'm like, no, that's for the video card. That control. No, for the video card. <laughs> what about a portable? I'm like, I don't even care about that. Have fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we do need to talk about it. Let's just go ahead and get into it because it is yes. the most gaming power you've ever held. Debatable. Uh, <laughs> not uh, compared well, to the <laughs> alternatives. <laughs> yes, yeah, it is a it is a, a Ryzen <laughs> APU, so that's awesome. So, mm-hmm. but yes, we are finally getting our Steam machine, and this is a Valve Steam Deck handheld portable gaming machine was just announced last week, and. Will hopefully bring Linux to the masses. Yes. And yeah, it has a custom made Ryzen APU, which is a really big deal. It's it's nice that Valve was working with AMD on this one. Awesome. And it's cool because you can bring your Steam library with you just by logging into Steam. And what's really neat is that no other portable gaming device allows for thousands of games out of the box. <laughs> this is mm-hmm. the, the first handheld device we've ever had that will allow you to play all your favorite games on Steam. And, you know, the, the we were uh, earlier talking about the home screen. Well, the new home screen looks actually nicer than the big picture mode we have on our current computers. And yeah, there are rumors that that's does. coming. <laughs> <laughs> the Steam Deck <laughs> interface is coming to our computers, so that will be cool. And, you know, here, what's amazing is Valve is actually really performing magic, and we hope this actually happens. So they have stated, for Deck, we're vastly improving Proton's game compatibility and support for anti-cheat solutions by working directly with the vendors. This is awesome. They're, they're kind of creating a universal hardware and software platform with the Steam Deck. And they want every game to minimal, minimally be at least Proton capable. So that's really cool. And the other big thing here is it is a computer. You can hook up a, compu- a monitor, keyboard, and mouse to your Steam Deck using a USB-C dock. Or they're going to have um, an official um, Steam Deck dock from Valve that's going to come out. And because Valve says, use your deck as a PC because it is one. And it is running Arch with Plasma, (laughs) with KDE Plasma. (laughs) Arch? That was was the the most surprising bit. Oh, yeah, it's running KDE. And my first instinct was, oh, God, why? And then, wait, no, it's an AMD APU. It'll probably work fine. It's just the NVIDIA drivers that it doesn't like. So... 
Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, Jill brought up the point earlier that the um, the new Steam Deck UI, I was looking at it, I was like, okay, I'm one of those idiots that kind of <laughs> went out of his way, a lot out of his way, uh, to <laughs> create his own Steam box uh, just to run big picture mode, just to be a console. You hit the power button, it comes on, you're logged into Steam big picture mode. Can we get some of the new? And yes, yes, apparently that will be made available to everyone as well. So thank you very much for that, Valve. And um, Yay. my other question is, <laughs> where can we download the new art-based <laughs> version of uh, Steam I I, yes. I, I I very much want to uh, play with that. <laughs> yes. Steam OS 3.0. I, yeah. I don't see what the big deal is, man. I mean, I've had my Steam Deck for a while. It's yes, you, you have a Stream Deck, not a Steam Deck. Hey, hey Jill. <laughs> the internet's incapable of making that distinction. <laughs> I would argue that point. <laughs> okay. There's your tweet. Something I asked on Twitter uh, before we did the show on Saturday. If you want the big, honking, chunky recap of this, uh, Pedro, myself, and Jordan, we d we spent 30 minutes on that. Go watch uh, Linux Teamcast episode 465. But I threw this up because, you know, you're going to be calling something the Steam Deck when the Stream Deck does exist. And they even had a launch for a new product same day. Yes, you might not have heard that. For reasons. <laughs> so what a I couple did, of uh, hours apart, yeah. <laughs> for our audio listeners, uh, how many kids are going to end up with a stream deck this December? Which I think is a valid thing, because I wanted to prove a point. I wanted to prove a point. Now, my boy Sandy, Sandy got it right. Um, Sandy's like, no. <laughs> Sandy was the only one that got it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this was immediately <laughs> followed by, hey, yeah, you know, it, yeah, the... the Stream Deck sounds awesome. And like, yeah, I know my kids are going to wait in line behind me. Then and yeah, it gets depends and might wait until 2022 or how many can they make? And uh, uh, <laughs> just everyone, you know, I can't wait to see the smile on their faces when they realize that Minecraft works 25% faster on a Stream Deck. <laughs> um, oh, you, I didn't know they were even batches for Stream Decks. Huh. But yes. uh, Arthurian is in batch two. <laughs> yeah, the ones with the proper NVMe um, where do I SSDs put, wait, out of the box. Pedro, where do I put the they, NVMe in my stream deck? Because that's this question. Uh, <laughs> didn't you take it apart once? <laughs> you should know where to put it. Yeah, by the way, <laughs> these are not like little OLED screens. There's nothing fancy in here. This is like a super low cost, uh, low res LCD with a uh, little touch mechanism on it. It's, yeah, these are wildly overpriced. So... <laughs> <laughs> brand confusion. I, I want to see what ends up with that. But let's talk about, because I've seen a lot of people just not really getting this right. Uh, it is a PC, as Jill said. You know, you can put you can put third-party software on there, whatever you want. It's running KD, and that's Valve. It's Steam. They're not going to lock it down. Now, um, I'm not terribly interested in the device. Myself, uh, the last handheld I had was my Turbo Express, so I'm like, whatever. Um I do believe just this announcement, the pre-orders kind of wrecked a lot of whatever momentum Nintendo was hoping to get with their OLED revision of the Switch. Because <laughs> A, people yeah. were not terribly happy with that. Like, what? Are, are you going to switch? No. Anything. But uh, it's going to make the hardware survey very interesting. One thing that we get <laughs> and we pay attention to on the Linux Teamcast Weekly is at the end of the month, because you get the Steam hardware and software survey, and we you can take a look and see what operating systems, you know, what Linux distributions people are running. So this is going to mix that up a little bit. I know Pedro is wildly excited because it's running KDE. Interesting. But I probably won't see the desktop very much because it will be used as a gaming thing so <laughs> as a gaming thing this is using proton what proton is is a variant of wine it's steam's take on it they're trying to get it down to a play button compatibility is really good it's not a hundred percent please keep that in mind and um being able to work with the ac titles let's do a wait and see on that i believe that they're going to be able to pull that off but when it comes down to the software stuff, uh, something I want to make very clear. I've seen several YouTubers and Twitch streamers just 
flat out say, yeah, I ordered one when it comes. I'm going to um, put Windows 10 or 11 on it and use it that way. <laughs> that might be more of an adventure than you're planning on because there's no small amount mm -hmm. of custom kit inside the uh, Steam Deck that drivers are not going to exist for. So yes. it might be might be quite the journey. Um, please keep that in mind. As far as the hardware, yeah, I am down with that. The Zen 2 quad shell RAM, 16 gigs. Uh, what is it? 669 RDNA grams. <laughs> so it's not terribly. That's 1.47 freedom units. And um, I'm down for it. Um, just, it's the first consumer outside of the consoles. It's the first consumer device to have RDNA 2 GPUs. Mm. That is very much part of the reason why Sweet. I went, okay, take my four pounds. I'm curious. <laughs> I, yeah. wish it, I want to I, see. I want a Thunderbolt <laughs> and we could hook up eGPU to it. It's type C oh. 3.2, whatever version of USB is current. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other Can't cool thing I was, yet I was because Intel. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. incorrect. Because they didn't want to spend the money to license the Thunderbolt. There's indie oh. boards with Thunderbolt. Yeah. <laughs> You can license the Okay, right. <laughs> yeah, I like that I also had a seven inch screen because I mostly see out of one eye and that it's big enough that I can, you know, hold it close enough and, and see see it. And it looks like a really nice screen. And um, the other thing I was impressed about, it has two, it's got a stereo mic in it. So that's really good for chatting and whatnot with the device. So that that is cool. Or you could just, you know, hook up a, a real XLR mic with to it. <laughs> So, I, it has Bluetooth. Just, yeah. You know, heads up. <laughs> I'm a little bit curious and a little bit because I've seen, hey, we can with a dock and we can turn it into a PC. If you want to turn it into like mm -hmm. a Franken box with wires and everything hanging out, I don't know how good of a desktop PC it'll be, but it'll be interesting to see nonetheless. But we do yeah, need I want to test that <laughs> to get in and shill a little bit for Linus's favorite company, NVIDIA. <laughs> yeah, so the NVIDIA Display Driver 470.57.02 is out with several very important bug fixes for Linux. And and one is for the Doom Eternal, uh those of, of us who like to play Doom Eternal, there is a was a bug that would which would enable G Sync um on accident and make your screen go black if you didn't have a G Sync capable monitor. <laughs> <laughs> that was a thing. So that got fixed. <laughs> and there's been lots of other fixes that Ven and Pedro are going to tell you about. <laughs> yeah, uh, they added support for the two unicorn GPUs, the 3070 <laughs> Ti and the 3080 Ti. Um, it's which... only myth. <laughs> only legend. <laughs> oh, no, these, if you want to talk about paper launches, you could maybe make the argument, that, okay, the 3080, 3090, and the 3070, the original ones, yeah, those were available in the higher quantities. They just happened to sell out very fast and then got scalped massively. Mm -hmm. The 3080 uh, Ti and the 3070 Ti, you don't see a lot of those, even on the listings on websites. <laughs> they don't even show up, not even as out of stock. They're just not there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it is mostly a bunch of uh, fixes and a couple of new Vulcan... Um, extensions yeah not much Vulcan of uh, anything the else big reason i <laughs> wanted to throw this in again hey not a gaming show but uh <laughs> fixes for blender and mm -hmm. x wayland fixes because there were some issues with flickering with blender when you were using x wayland oh, with nvidia yes that's one of the things they've added so always always good to see now we get to talk about arm because rtx is on it Oh, yes. And uh, not just um, RTX. You, They show a screenshot of uh, Wolf Inside Youngblood running on ARM. <laughs> running on Arch, specifically. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of insane. They got DLSS. And you can, there's a, there'll, there's a, uh, a video in the uh, link. So it's, on the, it, it is, I'm assuming, I couldn't see the uh, thing all terribly, uh, all that good, but it is their own hardware, obviously, and it's running with a 3060, but it is an ARM machine. So that's 
That's kind of crazy. Amazing. That just being able to have DLSS, it doesn't just enable gaming, but yes, that 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 will that will be a uh, part of it. Certainly. Oh, look at the little arch uh, in the background. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> it also um it basically it enables you to use those tensor cores and those RTX cores for some actual compute, which is why it's interesting for the ARM market. That that's going to be very very interesting, very very interesting. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I kind of yeah. I'm I'm one of those people. Mm -hmm. I, I I want to put a full on GPU with a Raspberry Pi on the compute <laughs> yeah. module ones with that expansion you're, board. You're adorable that they have. Days. You're absolutely adorable. <laughs> All this means is the uh, next switch is going to have ray tracing. That's it. Uh, you mean the next um, switch? <laughs> yes, switch. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to remember the name Shield Tablet. Yes, the the the, the them's the ones the prototypes. <laughs> <laughs> good news, good news. Glad to see it. But you ordered a thing. I mentioned it last week. Um, I did. That you know we've talked about the Pine Time, but there was a variation. Like, hey, did do you see that? Because it's uh, it's a little different, but it's a little cheaper. Yeah, I I, I wasn't actually aware that they'd made mm -hmm. the finalized version of the hardware because they were still, oh, it's still, you know, a development kit. It's just meant for testing. Now they have a, effectively a beta version out, which is the Pine Time Sealed, which is, yeah, it is uh, the Pine Time, but it comes already in its final uh, enclosure and you can get it right now for uh, $26.99 or whatever that happens to translate to in your local currency. And yeah, if you, they, they do put big, bold letters right at the top. If, if you want to do development for this, get one of the dev kits. They're a bit more expensive, but you have access to the EMMC module so you can pull it out and flash it with something else and then do it again. Uh, this one is effectively the final version. And that got me curious because I still have one of the old fashioned, uh, analog wristwatches. So, yeah, let's get something interesting. And this one comes with Infinity Time, which is uh, based on FreeRTOS. And it has a 240 by 240 uh, screen. And the battery, they claim up to, I think it's uh, five days or six days of battery life, which is impressive. Hmm. So, I, I, I'm curious. Uh, I put in the order for one. It might take uh, three weeks, as usual, same time as the... Uh, Pine book and the pine sill took to get here, so hopefully they won't uh, screw it up like they did with the pine book pro because that was missing some things. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, I am. I am actually interested in, in picking one up, even though I don't use watches. But this one, um, the other reason I would like it is it is it supposedly has a very good heart rate sensor in it, and uh, that people were saying is as good as Apple's, but. I don't know. <laughs> so I wanted to test that out. And uh, the step count counting feature with the acceler accelerometer would be nice because there are times <laughs> I would like to know, you know, how, how many steps I've taken to travel to places. And for this price, I mean, just it's it's like a, a buying a cookie <laughs> <Go> <laughs> under thirty dollars. <laughs> you can't beat it's the, the price. price of a swatch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Not the old swatches, though. The old ones used to be, be like fifty to hundred dollars back in the day. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the new swatches are much cheaper. Um, but it also looks like they have plans for accessories because I noticed on the website there is a Pine Time accessories web page, but like nothing lasers listed yet. or um, like a metal. <laughs> I'm guessing I don't know. Arm bands. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Pine Assassination Watch. <laughs> Think about it. Um, I don't know. I mean, twenty six dollars and you can't crack it open, which is fine if you just yeah. want the watch. And that that that's a rounding error when it comes to like what a modern smartwatch would cost. And you will not be heartbroken if it disappears. I'm like, okay, I'll order another one. Now, I guess it's fair to point out you you can probably open it once. I'm um, not too sure about getting it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it might, might be a little bit of arts and crafts to get it back together. And, um, <laughs> and some epoxy. At, at $26, I I tried. I spent an afternoon. Like, the smallest reason to order one, and I, I just couldn't. Uh, 
It's unfortunate. But Pedro will be back with a full review of like, it tells time yeah. your next segment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious because, yeah, I, I haven't had uh, any of the smartwatches thus far. So that will be my first smartwatch and it is priced accordingly. Because when I look <laughs> at the other smartwatches that are running like Android or Gear OS or whatever it happens to be, it, no, I don't want to pay 150 pounds for something that I don't even know if it works properly because there's no reviews. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Up next, I'm talking about pipe wire. We talk about that often. If you don't know, the main goal of pipe wire is to try to simplify Linux audio to the point Windows users can understand it. Maybe not. Maybe that's not their official. <laughs> Should be, but it's not what they officially say on um, their website. But it is a project to combine them all. You know, if you're dealing with Ulsa, Jack, anything else, and all your Bluetooth, it's like kind of like core audio for Apple. I know that's not the perfect analogy, but it's close enough to you're going to get what I'm saying. There is a big update this week, not 0.332. It's bringing a bunch of stuff to the project. And uh, for me, I keep an eye on it because I, I use Jack for everything in the studio, but Jack can now use RT kit to manage the real time priorities of threads that was missing. So, okay. Baby steps. Real time priority is uh, dropped when it's doing freewheeling mode and like an adored and stuff like that. That's basically allowing your CPU to process whatever audio you want and not waiting for your interface to do anything, which is a good idea. And, uh, Volume controls, they're back with the also plug in bonus soda, and they did fix the <laughs> latency recording. Away? Hey, man, you can, things happen. Things happen. Uh, <laughs> latency reporting is uh, sorted with Odd Door, which is good. And they've also fixed memory leaks and deadlocks and other assorted crashes. They've all been fixed, and I'm sure there's still more work to be done. And we all know I'm a massive, massive proponent of uh, Firewire. And admittedly, when uh, one of the Red Hat gentlemen hit me back on Twitter and was like, so what are you switching the studio over to Pipewire? I said, no time in the foreseeable future. Hi. Um, <laughs> Pipewire's not allowed in here because of reasons. And it, it's just not, again, for desktop stuff, it is absolutely in a good enough shape to where Fedora shipped it in the latest Fedora. And it works. So Yes. Hmm. Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Fedora 34 and Arch. It works very well on Arch as well. Always mm -hmm. good to see progress on it. I look forward mm -hmm. to the day of um, getting to play with it. And it also does video stuff too, but I don't have Wayland, So I'm not, <laughs> I know I always get a message like it does more than audio. I'm like, yes, but unfortunately I'm covering it. I only care about the audio part. So it's kind of, you see how that balances out. Um, and people on the internet aren't mm. necessarily complaining about video on Linux. They're complaining about audio on Linux. Audio doesn't work on Linux. That's why. Uh, yeah, apparently. Yeah. What you say? <laughs> See, look, my stream deck doesn't even have speakers. <laughs> no forward facing speakers. I said something funny because speakers. I couldn't hear anything. Oh. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> huh? Um, <laughs> sticking on the audio train, I do uh, what I can. I try to do a good for the Linux community people trying to record, make music and stuff like that, try to save them some money. So one thing that we do have on Linux is excellent support for Firewire audio devices. Now, they, Firewire is dead tech, but there's some great hardware and it's really inexpensive because Windows 10 and Apple, they've just dropped support for it. And rightfully so. They've moved on to things. Professional audio interfaces and semi-pro audio interfaces went from Firewire to Thunderbolt. And um, there's a lot of that stuff getting dropped on eBay and Reverb and places like that on the cheap. And something I was curious about was the Motu 828 MK3. So um, I dug around in my piggy bank and I finally found one that was reasonably priced and I gave it a treat. This was kind of interesting because what started out as, hey, I'm just going to take another one for Team Linux. So anybody looking to get one working, they'll know whether or not they can. And this ended up being a completely different video. Because uh, TAC, who maintains the also Firewire stack, uh, managed to figure out the clock recovery issues with Motu and DigiDesign interfaces halfway through production on this video. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I, I got to do take two on this. Because traditionally with Firewire interfaces, 
You have the Fado driver stack, which is known as the one that works, and the Alsa stack, which is the one that can sometimes kind of output sound, and that's really all you should expect from it. But um, it's sorted now, for the most part. For the most part. I haven't done extensive testing on it. I did with this, and uh, out of the box, it's working. But you can't get too excited just yet with the out of the box, because um, it's not quite in the kernel. So that, I have a little disclaimer in the video. Hey, future people, by the way, you don't have to do this step, but you can build the current um, also branch and set up the modules and install it and it'll do it. But even if you're listening to this in the future, we're talking plug and play. Just plug it in and you're done with it. How do you install FireWire on a modern CPU? Well, you buy a FireWire card, a PCIe Express, and you stick it in the hole and you cut it on. Oh, you're done. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. And I bring this up because having that plug-and-play compatibility with these interfaces mixed with pipe wire, so people don't have to RTFM or learn about the system that they're using, it's going to be good times. Yeah. See, I gotta, I gotta carry these audio things all by myself. These two check out. <laughs> See, that's that's your shtick, man. We 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 don't have anything. <laughs> that, that, that's like this is like a skill I want to help them develop because when I heard them talking about yeah. something that I'm like I don't know, but I'm asking questions. <laughs> I have a question, uh, Ben. Does that work for classic PCI uh, ports, not PCI Express? What do you mean? Of FireWire cards for PCI, which I have plenty of. <laughs> yeah, but then you'd fall into the category of like, why are you trying to run, a, you know, here's real-time audio processing is the <laughs> second most intensive thing that you can request of a computer to do outside of gaming. Yeah. <laughs> so here's two pro tips from old man then. One, <laughs> you know what? It might be a fun project to take a 10-year-old laptop uh, and try to turn it into a DAW. It's a bad idea. Because it's not going to be powerful enough. You're like, why am I getting X runs? Why are these things up? Because you're running it on 10-year-old hardware. You know what my DAW's running on? It's running on an old box, but a reasonably old box. It's an 8-core, mm -hmm. 16-thread AMD 1700. It's not going to break the bank. But you need to think mid-range gaming PC, not uh, antique. Like, hey, I could use this PC high cart. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> also, don't use a laptop. Because one of the things that everyone... I'm like, what? I, I get these questions all the time. Like, why am I getting these questions? But frequency scaling, that can kill you when it drops down. So you can disable that, disable your C states. And like, boom, that's what I do on the other. You can't disable that permanently on a laptop. It will thermally throttle outside of your control. Keep that in mind. That will cause X runs. Mm -hmm. So don't use laptops. And then you're not going to listen to me. So. Whatever. I'm wasting my breath. So yeah, Jill, to answer your question in a roundabout way, yes. uh, if you have a computer with a PCI, PCI slot and it's not bridged, like the one on my, um, you know, it's not like a legacy port, don't use that computer if all it has is PCI holes. Cool. Well, I was talking about mixed boards because there's ones that PCIe and PCI, a lot of the old workstations have that. So still have a PCI port. And you can still buy current they boards, but yeah, motherboards. Like yeah. said, those are bridged. <laughs> yeah, they're bridged. Yeah. So, cool. yeah, there you go. Uh, Adobe is done. <laughs> Thank <a> you, Ben. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is actually really huge. So guess who is joining the Blender Foundation's development fund? Adobe. Adobe is. <laughs> I was. I was waiting for this one. This is kind of earth shattering. They are joining as a corporate gold member to directly support core blender, blender development and making sure that blender blenders in integration with the Adobe creative cloud suite remains top notch, of course, because even Adobe sees now the power open source and how, how much its software is being, being used with blender and people are bringing, you know, Photoshop images over and after effects movies and premiere videos over to blender. So it's, it's definitely very, very exciting. I was, I was waiting for them to fund uh, Blender. This is huge. <laughs> oh, is it my turn to put a damper on the thing? Okay. <laughs> it, it's just Adobe buying some goodwill. 
we've had Linux people shouting for how many years? Release the creative cloud on Linux, please. Just, you know, let people <laughs> who want to give you money, give you money. No. We're, it, instead, they did the same tactic that uh, Epic did when they just dropped some pocket change on Lutris. It's like, oh, uh, the people use Blender after they use our stuff because we're collecting telemetry and we know what people are using all the time. Adobe. Uh, so, yeah, here's uh, here's some money. Yeah, no. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying uh, that company looked at its numbers from its products like, hey, people are using that. Hey, we want more people to use our product and it would benefit us if we sponsored this other product that people use a lot. Exactly. Yeah. Literally <laughs> buying themselves some goodwill. <laughs> Goodwill's bad, right? It's, well, it's actually <laughs> more than that because they're they're seeing that um, Blender is has gotten huge in the industry and it's often used in concert with Maya and Modo and some of the other big 3D animation softwares. So, you know, they're they're seeing the growth of Blender and even, you know, Autodesk and, you know, lots of big companies are on board, NVIDIA, AMD. So they don't they don't want to be, you know, lost because <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't want to look like they're, they're, they haven't purchased their yeah. goodwill token. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to look like they don't care. <laughs> so let's yeah, let's exactly. remind people that we're here. At even the if end it's, of the day, know, I'll Linux, say this. Here, that's, here's my take on Adobe. Um, <laughs> subscription as a service. Just say no. Yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. a thing. <laughs> that is the only thing with Adobe. Okay. Yeah. Now, can, well, there are ways around option, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can, can I go to the Adobe store and buy an Adobe product? Name. Nope. <laughs> you can go to can Bob's discount store <laughs> and uh, rent yourself a copy. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a weird thing. I mean, not, not to get into the side, this is like one way Da Vinci has made a lot of unintentional inroads because there's something you can do with Da Vinci. You can buy a copy. You can buy a standalone copy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So if you'd like to buy us a standalone copy, that's a horrible transition. Head over to <laughs> patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, we got a gang of uh, rewards if you can help us out. That is brilliant. If you can, that's cool too. But if you can, we got a bonus show for everybody. We got the pre-pre super shows and we invite you to come hang out with us an hour before we go live Saturday. Speaking of going live, we have the uncut versions of this show and Saturday. So this is going to be about two hours in podcast format plus the video. And on Wednesdays, not Wednesdays, but Saturdays, you're going to get the four-hour rock block that we do early access to anything that we're putting out. I'll be putting out a review thing for a, um, not really a review, educational, kind of educational, OBS Linux basics. I should have another video out in preview on our Patreon page later this week for everyone to take a look at. Give comments. Maybe I missed something. Tell me I didn't put pseudo in the right place, even though you told me not to put pseudo in a place. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> assume pseudo <laughs> always assume pseudo when in doubt pseudo uh, yeah that's brilliant thank you that's uh, how we finance all of this we don't have ads and speaking of tracking we're not doing that and uh, you can just download our stuff directly from our site because we host everything ourselves that's kind of brilliant there are wish zones if you would like to get Pedro you got an update you got a, what do you, why do you want speakers man uh, Nori wants speakers to be fair. <laughs> okay. Those are just sitting there waiting for the prices to go down because right now they're a little too hot for me. It's like under a hundred pounds. What once one of those drops, I'll uh, one thing I'm very I'll, proud I'll of, of all of our listeners is no one's ever picked up this for you because that is stupid. A fan for the RAM. Um, uh, no, that's actually the RAM. It's just that the first picture happens to be the stupid little Let me fan rephrase that. that. I'm proud oh, of all funny. of our listeners refusing to buy something that ridiculous because that is a fan on some RAM. <laughs> it's you. some RAM that comes with a fan, yes. <laughs> uh, if you pick up anything like that, uh, we get a little package. We get a little thank you. We're like, oh, it's always nice to get presents, but you can send us a note and we will read it. We can probably look at Jill's, but I'm not even going to have to guess. It's full of <laughs> penguins. <laughs> penguins. Tons and tons penguin of penguins. Penguin. <laughs> Plushies. Hang on. There's some tech down there. All right. There's a yeah. key. <laughs> there's an SSD. <laughs> <laughs> That's for to upgrade my old laptops. All right. <laughs> We do have one for the studio. Uh, I do something very untraditional. I, I was hounded in even setting this up. Uh, things I'm planning on buying. 
in the studio. That's where stuff goes. It is on the studio wish zone. And you'll see stuff go in and out all the time because I use it as just a tracking shopping list. But if you're doing something before I do, you end up on this wall for helping us stick our little Linux powered thing together. But there's nothing entertaining like fan powered RAM or plushy penguins. It's all like <laughs> audio <laughs> server stuff. And yeah. <laughs> Motherboards, graphics yeah. cards, monitors. <laughs> Pitching them on the wall back then. It's also expensive too. That's why some stuff stays up there for a while. Yeah, like no, five. seriously. Don't buy me that RAM. That's way too expensive. If you are looking to buy me something from the, <laughs> um, the list, there's some cheaper items that are spurs there. Get me one of them. It's fine. <laughs> but stick around. Uh, if you are a patron, your names will be in the credits. We might even say them. That's how that works. Ooh, you, you know what? We, I, when we yeah. have a new one, Alex. A new one, what? A new Patreon. Ah. A new patron. Ooh, I should Patreon. say a Patreon <laughs> of our One Patreon. Patreon. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I know. I noticed that I added Alex to uh, the chairlings in the credits for this show. This app, well, morning, I guess. And I'm like, man, I am like two. We're two more chairlings away. I'm like, that's going to be two pages now. Jeez. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those awesome. are the kind of problems I like to see. But what I really want someone to buy Pedro is a slice of pie. <laughs> Alexandria fragrances, a <laughs> slice of pie, vanilla. Ooh. Can like, we claim vanilla uh, perfume prior art on that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I because don't. if they're making perfume, <laughs> Pedro, we can claim. I guess it's a vanilla cream pie. <laughs> could it, could Extract. It, it, it might be flammable too. I have matches. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's the best kind of perfume. Uh, something else that will probably turn flammable if you leave it long enough uh, is uh, what this crazy person uh, decided to do with the, um, this comes from highhighhigh.com slash food, uh, which is uh, a little project to check okay, your yeast. Real quick. Effectively. PSA acceptance <laughs> factor on this. Uh, no. Negative. <laughs> first of all is that a bomb at the top there and second of all what exactly are you looking to smuggle in that jar <laughs> but yeah it is um effectively uh, a little e-ink screen running uh with, with the help of a raspberry pi uh which checks the co2 levels humidity temperature and precipitation i mean uh the height of the contents inside the jar and just, you know, I had to make that little uh, joke in there because it is effectively a weather station for the inside of a yeast jar with an e-ink screen. It's mm -hmm. it takes uh, shows an update of the past three hours, so you can see the levels of everything. And yeah, no, that is a very good use for like the weather, a typical weather station type of thing. And instead, it's being used to control yeast and co2 levels and everything else That's i mean have you ever had to deal with yeast getting out of control man i mean it's a nightmare <laughs> i've never left it that long no <laughs> i think that i just thought that was kind of neat um i, I like i understand oh okay this is lazy but that's my kind of lazy you know yeah <laughs> And it's a nice use of, it, use of an e-ink display on a Raspberry Pi. I was really happy to see that. <laughs> and very low power with that battery. It'll last yeah. needs to be able to graft Weeks. their yeast. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So what do we have up next? Oh, right. We're doing this. We are doing this, aren't we? Uh, Yay. <laughs> so cute. That's a word. Uh, mini Raspberry <laughs> Pi server with built-in UPS and stats. To, oh, okay. Uh, do we do we get a parts list on this? Maybe. Uh, there's a description in the video, but yeah, no, no actual Not an list. Article. <laughs> yeah, they have the. Um, uh, what is it? It's a Raspberry Pi 4B with uh, a UPS Plus module at eighteen six fifty. Battery, uh, TD tidy little one twenty eight by sixty four. Oh right, <laughs> okay. One thing, one thing you need to be very aware of um, on your parts list is a three D printer, laser cutter um, <laughs> for the case. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, 
It does have the, okay, that that's legit. You can put, what is it running, like 18650s for the, yep. uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> Battery backup and GPIO. I guess maybe is, 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 is that, that's very expensive cute, Joe. <laughs> it, it is, but it, I, I like how it has uh, the, the case has transparent side panels. Which screams it needs it really needs rainbow vomit, and they did put an <laughs> RGB fan in there, so he did put an RGB fan in. <laughs> no, but it's it's just so cute and functional, and I think it's really cool because it gives you um, an hour and a half of battery life for the onboard UPS is is actually brilliant because that that's definitely needed when you're running a Pi as a server. It's for often a mission critical. Things uh, or tasks, and you it's need a teeny tiny little server. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I rack mounted the Raspberry Pi we have in the studio, which, ironically <laughs> enough, is controlling our Steam Deck. Um, <laughs> 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 and by rack mounting it, it means I have a shelf in the rack that I put it on in a case because I bought one <laughs> that ridiculous argon case that is horrible at cooling. Um, cool project, I like it, and uh. Hey, if you want to get adventurous or if you're planning on doing anything adventurous, Pi wise or Linux wise, open source wise, we want you to tell us about it. Yes. Mm. Tell us in full detail with all of the schematics and everything. Just don't detail. include URLs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to know everything. I'm not going to do anything with the information. I'm way too lazy. But uh, yeah, we want to know everything. And uh, if you'd like to share, go on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Hit the contact button. Form you got to fill. Pretty easy. If you must include URLs for some reason, it, there's a little caveat that you should read. Well, there's like four different caveats at the top because that's how many times <laughs> we've had people uh, report issues with the contact form. So there you go. It's, uh, yeah, just let us know. Pick LWDW as the topic that you'd like to discuss, and we will address it right here in the feedback area, which no one has taken us up on in a while. They have. It's just not been worth putting on the show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. It, not, nothing's guaranteed, but, I mean, if you put some effort into it, a sentence usually is not worth, um, like, I can just answer you. so Or I can just forward it to whoever it's meant to. Maybe we could talk about sponges. <laughs> oh, yeah. Linux sponge cast. Uh, the prototype episode Lufa? will be going live. Coral. On the 32nd of February. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, that's the thing. We got to bounce out of here. We have spent our time, but we will see you next week. Until then, enjoy some granites. Yay. Oh, thanks again, Alex, for becoming a wonderful patron. How do you know? You've been talking to Alex? Alex like, Whoa, ha, 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 ha. No. I have joined. Where's my layer? <laughs> Wait, it's not uh, Air EXE, Alex, the developer of uh, Could be. I Project don't... Heartbeat? <laughs> See, this is, I am devoid of the creep creeping gene. I'm like, hey, cool. <laughs> right on. I don't know. It's, it's just said Alex. So it's like, okay, we had an Alex already. I don't know. It's, yeah. Alex. <laughs> it's like we have 13 Steves. <laughs> we do have three. Yes. <laughs> Steve See, I E, just Steve B, Alex and Steve H. Yeah. <laughs> and Steve R. <laughs> no, 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 that's Steve H. H <laughs> so that, you are correct. I stand corrected. <laughs> Steve husband. 